Good morning. Today I will cover the LibreOffice 10th anniversary, the story of the community during these 10 years, or even better, during the 20 years that uh, are uh, passed uh, since July 19, 2000, when Sun announced OpenOffice.org. Uh, the OpenOffice community, after 10 years, announced uh, LibreOffice. Uh, 10 years ago, uh, on September 28, 2010. Uh, we should always remember that the history of OpenOffice uh, is a lot uh, uh, older, as it starts uh, in uh, 1984 uh, in northern Germany, when Marco Burris uh, releases uh, StarWriter. During the years, StarWriter becomes uh, StarOffice with the addition of other modules, and in 1999, Sun acquires Star Division and decides to release uh, the uh, Star Office uh, source code as uh, open source uh, to create a community around uh, the project. Uh, the, that project, with Sun uh, coordinating or managing the entire project, uh, um, lasted for 10 years, but during that time the community started to grow and uh, also started to complain a little bit about uh, Sun's management of the project. In fact, uh, OpenOffice uh, was uh, quite lean in the year 2000. These are the dependencies of StarOffice 5.2, but over the years, in five years, became uh, quite fat as the features were added, but the code was not cleaned. So uh, several of the uh, most senior developers in the community, independent from Sun, started to complain. And uh, at the Lyon conference in 2006, uh, Michael Bemmer, the leader of the Star Office division at Sun, uh, made a promise that the code uh, would have been, uh, uh, the complexity of the code would have been reduced, the uh, handling of patches would have been simplified, and uh, newcomers would have been uh, mentored. Unfortunately, this didn't happen during the years uh, until 2010, and uh, was uh, mm, achieved by the LibreOffice community after 2010. As I said, in uh, uh, 2009, Oracle acquired Sun. It was a terrible day for open source and especially for OpenOffice. The community that had already started to discuss uh, about the future of the project decided to turn upside down the culture and uh, switch from the umbrella culture uh, managed by Sun, where the company was uh, basically protecting the project, but also um, avoiding that anything that was not in line with Sun's uh, objective could happen inside the project, to a mixing bowl culture where all the members of the community could have a say in uh, the development of the project and could uh, uh, participate to the development and the decision. So on September 28, 2010, the OpenOffice community announces the Document Foundation. Uh, the foundation is independent and uh, we chose uh, at the time the brand LibreOffice uh, because that was the best name uh, available at the time in terms of uh, um, copyright, intellectual property and uh, availability of uh, internet domains. Basically, what we decided to do was to relaunch the innovation. The open office at the time uh, uh, risked to be abandoned by Oracle because uh, uh, it was not within uh, Oracle uh, objectives, and uh, so the community wanted to uh, bring uh, uh, OpenOffice further. It could not do, uh, use the name OpenOffice because that was property of Oracle, so we decided to uh, find another name. Um, 
these uh, uh, two pies represent uh, the, east, the situation of contribution 10 months before and 10 months after the fork of September 28. As you can see, uh, the, during the 10 months before the fork, uh, 66 plus 16 percent of the contribution were uh, from uh, Sun uh, or from the Open Office division. After the fork, uh, uh, the situation became a lot more balanced. There were more companies contributing. Uh, there were newcomers into the project. There were companies that were not allowed to contribute before that could give uh, a visible and, uh, and uh, important contribution to the project. So what happened is that we uh, announced LibreOffice 3.3 in late January 2011, just before FOSDEM, and these uh, uh, were the gadget that we uh, released at FOSDEM uh, that year, where the interest around uh, the LibreOffice project was just huge. We also decided that releases would happen every six months. Uh, they would have uh, been uh, synchronized with the Linux distribution, uh, like any normal free software project and there would have been uh, monthly or bi-monthly uh, bug fix releases on the stable branch. This uh, has happened since uh, 2010 and after 10 years we have maintained steadily this uh, uh, cadence. Uh, this uh, in terms of uh, situation is what happened uh, uh, with the uh, open office source code. As you can see, uh, we announced uh, the open office is the black one, so uh, the gray one is LibreOffice, the dark gray one is LibreOffice, and uh, the light gray one is Apache Open Office. What happened is that Oracle uh, at the time uh, had a contract with IBM uh, and IBM uh, didn't want to work with the community. So they decided to uh, give the uh, open office uh, code to Apache Foundation, basically with the objective of killing LibreOffice. This uh, luckily didn't happen. And uh, basically uh, the contrary happened. OpenOffice is uh, almost completely abandoned while uh, LibreOffice uh, is growing uh, and keeps on releasing uh, uh, new uh, versions and new features. Also, what the um, OpenOffice uh, uh, and what IBM uh, was saying at the time that LibreOffice uh, would abandon open document format as, uh, is completely false as the reality is that uh, the release of uh, uh, Open Document Format 1.3 uh, uh, happened uh, because uh, the Document Foundation managed to find uh, uh, money for the uh, release of the standard, managed to uh, put money into the release of the standard and basically managed to achieve uh, what uh, the uh, enemies were saying that we would have never done. This uh, as a testament to the fact uh, that is LibreOffice the real uh, heir of uh, OpenOffice. So the Document Foundation, a few words on the Document Foundation, this was the, the first uh, home page of the uh, of the website, not exciting, uh, I would say, in terms of um, visual, but very important in terms of content. The founding principles of the Document Foundation. We decided to have a copyleft license. We decided not to have a contributor agreement. We decided to be based on meritocracy. We decided to have a community governance and we decided to be vendor independent. What does it mean, vendor independent? It means that no company can have uh, more than one third of votes in any of the two um, 
governing bodies of the Document Foundation, the Board of Directors and the Membership Committee. The Board of Directors is responsible for the day-to-day -day activity and for the management of the project. Uh, the Membership Committee is responsible for accepting members, renewing members and uh, controlling the uh, membership situation. Uh, these are the numbers. The board of director is uh, seven members plus three deputies, and uh, as uh, people from uh, uh, for two years, the membership committee also is for two years, is five members and four deputies, and uh, the election of the membership committee has just happened. We have then an advisory board that advises the board of directors with 15 entities, companies and uh, uh, free software foundations. And then we have uh, the members, the board of trustees with 215 members. Uh, if you contribute to LibreOffice, you are warmly invited to apply as members. And of course, we have a large number of developers which are definitely uh, LibreOffice main asset. When we started, LibreOffice was considered as a very difficult uh, uh, source code to act uh, on. And uh, what the senior developers did was to uh, manage the source code and uh, find uh, the, uh, uh, the task that could be achieved uh, even by newcomers without uh, uh, dealing with the entire uh, source code base, which is uh, over 7 million lines of code. And we call these easy acts. Easy acts have several advantages. They are simple and accessible tasks. They are, have uh, the objective of um, ease the learning curve and also to solve uh, small problems uh, which uh, uh, should have been uh, solved otherwise by core developers. And uh, core developers have mentored newcomers and checked their work uh, on easy acts. And this uh, is a picture where Michael Mix is mentoring uh, a younger developer in, uh, uh, on uh, the, the source code. With thanks to EasyAC and thanks to the fact that the uh, project showed immediately that was dynamic, that was growing, and that was offering a future to the open office uh, source code, uh, the number of developers uh, grew quite quickly. As you can see, in September 2010, uh, we announced with around 20 developers, but in October 2010, 80 developers joined the group and since then uh, we always had at least three new developers per month uh, until today. Uh, of course, uh, after a, sh a while uh, we, we, we stopped counting uh, new developers, especially uh, when uh, Apache OpenOffice stopped having developer and stopped uh, uh, throwing uh, uh, f uh, f FUD or FAD uh, on uh, LibreOffice as they did uh, until 2014 uh, when IBM uh, was uh, active in, uh, in the project. Uh, developers uh, also worked at uh, renewing the code, cleaning the code. Uh, the uh, first thing uh, was to uh, change uh, the build system uh, and which has been completely rewritten and uh, now is uh, as Karl Vogel says uh, is uh, extremely easy to build. Um, unit tests uh, were also um, created and uh, added so um, this is the situation up to LibreOffice 6.0 but they are uh, growing as uh, there are new unit tests uh, for uh, uh, each new significant feature which are added and performed uh, on a regular basis. Also, we, uh, we did uh, uh, load crash testing uh, 
on import and uh, export. Uh, as you can see, the situation improved uh, quite a lot. And uh, there were also there are also automated testing uh, on uh, uh, specific uh, module. These are the testing uh, on uh, calc. Last, we um, we translated German comments. Uh, as I said uh, earlier, uh, Star Office was born in Germany and uh, at first was not supposed to be an international or a global project. So it, the, the source code was commented in, uh, in German. And of course, uh, when, uh, when we started, uh, we realized that uh, a source code commented in German would be a barrier uh, to the uh, contribution of people not speaking uh, German. So we started to translate uh, German comments in English and uh, by uh, doing this uh, we also cleaned uh, comments uh, which uh, were not any more relevant. We cleaned comments that were uh, still there although they were uh, replaced by newer feature. Uh, the situation now is that we still have a, a few words of German in the source code but the newcomers are uh, uh, do find uh, a source code which is completely commented in English. This is the situation of commits uh, during the last two years. Uh, more or less uh, uh, March 2018, um, February 2020. The situation is not really different uh, uh, as of today. Uh, so we have um, uh, different companies providing a significant contribution, as you can see, Collabora, Red Hat, CIB. Uh, we also have a large number of companies providing small, a, a smaller number of contribution, but still incredibly important ones. Uh, some of them are working specifically at uh, uh, solving uh, uh, interoperability issues with uh, Microsoft Office. And uh, as you can see, 28% uh, 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 of the uh, Git commits are by independent volunteers, which is very important because uh, this uh, maintains and protects the diversity of the project. The Git commits, uh, uh, of course, uh, have a different trend per week, but as you can see, these are the same numbers uh, over the, uh, the uh, two years period uh, on a weekly basis. We also uh, care a lot about uh, uh, the uh, quality of the source code and the quality of the source code uh, has also indicators. One of them uh, is the uh, Coverity Scan score. As you can see, in 2018 uh, we reached the outstanding uh, objective of having uh, zero defects. Uh, and you can say, yes, but this was 200, 2018, uh, uh, which is the situation today. As you can see, today we have one so we we don't have uh, i would say anything uh, different than from 2018 and this uh, gives libreoffice uh, an incredible advantage in terms of uh, uh, source code uh, uh, cleanliness uh, both on uh, free open source software and on uh, proprietary software uh, as you can see uh, free open source software of course, uh, as a better quality than uh, proprietary software, uh, but LibreOffice has an incredibly uh, better quality than both of them. We also use uh, uh, fuzzing uh, technologies. Um, one of the most known is Google OS Fuzz, uh, but we use others. Uh, as you can see from uh, this, uh, uh, these are the commits that are based on different fuzzing uh, uh, 
um, tools. Uh, uh, you can see that there is coverity, uh, but there are others. And uh, this is an area where uh, we uh, get the contribution of people that has uh, specific uh, competencies in areas and uh, they help us uh, in uh, spotting vulnerabilities before the vulnerabilities reach the end user. And these are the development cycles. As you can see, we, we had uh, uh, we, we started with code cleaning, code cleaning, we got to code refactoring, uh, uh, then uh, we uh, went to the user interface and then to Ubiquitous productivity, which means that LibreOffice is available today on every real platform uh, and uh, we will see that later. Uh, we achieved uh, several objectives which were incredibly important and uh, the reality is that at the end uh, we paid down as a substantial technical debt that was uh, present when we fought in 2010. And now let's look at the community. The community contributes in, uh, in many areas. Community is mostly based by uh, individuals in this case, although in the community there are companies that are contributing, but now I'm looking at statistics uh, which are uh, um, specific or more specific to individuals. Uh, these are uh, uh, questions and comments on Ask LibreOffice. These are uh, uh, Bugzilla issues that are um, managed. As you can see, uh, the, the number of issues is stable. We try to keep uh, the number of solved issues, which are the light blue, uh, always uh, at a certain level. The community um, has a number of uh, um, regular contributors, uh, more or less uh, um, 1,000, uh, as you can see from these numbers. We have uh, 70 uh, contributors, which are regular ones, uh, and uh, produce uh, almost 80% of all the commits. Uh, we have uh, 180 which are regular, uh, so um, core is daily, regular, uh, we would say is weekly or monthly, casual is uh, quarterly uh, or yearly. Um, it is important uh, to have uh, this number that uh, have a regular replacement because uh, uh, although the casual are doing only 5%, uh, that 5% can be very important. And uh, the community is very widespread. Uh, dark green is where we have uh, members. Light green is, w is where we have uh, active community but we don't have members. We invite people in these areas to apply for membership because we consider that very important uh, to become members of the, uh, the Document Foundation to contribute in a more active way and to be recognized for contribution by the project. LibreOffice uh, uh, has a, an extremely large number of language version. We ship uh, 119 uh, languages, but there are 145 active uh, language projects. Uh, there are 4,600 users registered on WebLate. Of course, not all of them are active uh, on a daily basis, as I said. They are um, most of them uh, are active uh, uh, twice a year when uh, we have major release, but it's uh, extremely important that LibreOffice is releasing languages uh, that are not uh, major languages and therefore uh, they risk in some cases to disappear. Uh, I can make the examples of Guarani as South American languages spoken in uh, Paraguay, Argentina, and uh, which uh, 
has only LibreOffice as uh, software available in uh, their own language. Of course, uh, all the Guarani people or most of the Guarani people also speak Spanish, but it's important that they have a software which represents uh, and reflects their culture. And uh, every year we have a conference. We had Lib LibreOffice conference in Paris in 2011, in Berlin in 2012, in Milan in 2013, in Bern, Switzerland in 2014, in Aarhus in Denmark in 2015, in Brno, uh, Czech Republic in 2016, in Rome again in Italy in 2017, in Tirana, Alban Albania in 2018, in Almeria, Spain in 2019. In Almeria, we, we, had, a, we had a bus even uh, to bring people to, to the conference venue. And in 2018, we had a conference uh, in Indonesia. The Indonesian community is a very large one. And in 2019, we had conferences uh, from local communities, such as the Libre Italia conference uh, in, uh, in Italy. This was in Palermo. And uh, in 2019, we also had continental uh, conferences. We had uh, LibreOffice conference in Latin America in uh, Paraguay in, uh, at the University of Asuncion. And uh, we had the LibreOffice conference Asia in Tokyo. Uh, it's very important to have uh, these uh, community gatherings. Uh, in uh, one month we will have the LibreOffice conference, uh, uh, which is going to be virtual in 2020 uh, for the, because of the current uh, situation. But we hope uh, in 2021 uh, to meet again face to face with our community. And now let's go quickly to standards and interoperability. LibreOffice uh, is the only software that provides a, a document standard format for true interoperability. Um, on the other end, uh, uh, Microsoft uh, writes manuals on how to lock in your clients. And uh, uh, if you look at the um, Open Office uh, uh, XML uh, um, at the Microsoft Office XML files. You un you perfectly understand uh, how they have been uh, um, developed uh, for uh, uh, locking. It's a very sophisticated way of locking in um, the users because uh, they don't see where they are locked in. So the open document format is the true document standards which offers freedom of choice. Freedom of choice because uh, it's uh, written and described in a way that can be implemented in, uh, in, the, in a good way by uh, different projects. The description is clear, the standard is extremely well written, respects other standards. And uh, the result is uh, ODF-based interoperability, which means uh, that the content uh, is uh, decoupled from the software. Um, you can use uh, any software and the content uh, will always be the same or uh, extremely similar. I mean, the file will look the same, but the um, underneath contents uh, which are written in XML language will be extremely similar even if produced by different software. In the case of uh, Microsoft Office uh, files, the content, uh, uh, the, the, the file is always the same, but the content is uh, extremely different even if written by different version of the same software. So um, this uh, is uh, the reason why um, if uh, other software tries to read the Microsoft Office documents, they often fail because the, uh, what was uh, the, um, the XML for that, that content for that 
file six months ago will probably be completely different today. So an interoperable file format uh, means that independent from the software you will have uh, something that can be uh, written and uh, read in the same way by every software. Um, in terms of documents uh, formats, so we have a pseudo standards which is uh, Microsoft Office document format or Office Open XML. Uh, Doc, XLS and PPT are proprietary. Uh, DocX, uh, XLS, X and PPTX are uh, XML based, but the reality is that uh, it doesn't change, the situation doesn't change a lot. They are all uh, proprietary uh, format. Open document format uh, is uh, uh, a real standard is XML, is consistent, is versioned and uh, in terms of uh, standard is uh, definitely superior. Let's make an example. Uh, let's take uh, the famous uh, LibreOffice, um, the famous Shakespeare sentence to be or not to be, that is the question. If you take uh, LibreOffice in 2017, 2018, 2019, um, the description, uh, the, 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 that sentence will always be written in the same way uh, in uh, term of XML. And uh, as you can see, the uh, XML tags are uh, uh, absolutely standard. Text, P4 paragraph, style, uh, the P1 is a code for uh, paragraph 1. Uh, of course, uh, in this case, the document is just a paragraph, so there is only a P1. In a, in a longer document, there would be a P2, P3, P4, according uh, to the format of different paragraphs. Uh, but this uh, will all be explained in a clear way inside the uh, LibreOffice document inside the XML of the LibreOffice document. On the other hand, uh, if we take Microsoft Office uh, Shakespeare in 2017, you see you have a 2B, uh, then you have the comma as a different, uh, in, a, in a different line. Uh, you have a space uh, which uh, is preserved because it's together to, with the previous one etc. Uh, is uh, a little bit weird but in addition you can look uh, at the um, at the XML tags they are not standard they are combined uh, they have been completely rewritten which means uh, that uh, uh, the description uh, is longer uh, one of the reason why the description of uh, Office Open XML is longer than the description of ODF uh, is because uh, even the XML standard has been uh, rewritten and uh, therefore had to be described uh, while uh, the standard one uh, um, just refers uh, to the XML uh, uh, general standard uh, syntax. In 2018, uh, as you can see, uh, the same sentence uh, changes and uh, the same happens in 2019, which is a little bit um, simpler in terms of structure, but the reality is that in any case is not XML standard. Let's look at the uh, another example. Um, let's look at colors. Uh, this uh, square uh, is red, uh, is red for our brain and for the computer, is uh, the FF0000 color. Um, LibreOffice describes that square in the same way in Rider, in Calc and in Press. And again, uh, the tags are standard, format, color and the uh, color code. In Office Open XML, uh, you have uh, different tags according to the software. So you have a W, which is word color, uh, again W, value, 
and uh, the the color value. In Excel, uh, you have uh, uh, no reference to the to the application because there's no tag that tells you that this uh, is Excel. Uh, so color RGB and uh, the code color is uh, is different, but because there are two F more than uh, than the real uh, the real code and in PowerPoint you have an A because the original name of PowerPoint uh, before uh, the software was acquired by Microsoft started with A and you have a sRGB uh, CLR uh, that should be um, RGB color and then the value uh, by the way this is not an RGB color uh, by any mean so uh, completely non-standard completely invented XML tags and uh, inadequate of interoperability so interoperability uh, based on uh, uh, proprietary format uh, as a cost not many research but luckily uh, there is this one uh, which is made by the National Institute of uh, Standard and Technology uh, which is a body of uh, the US government they checked the situation of the uh, US capital facilities industry which basically is the industry that gives money to companies that build uh, large buildings like skyscrapers commercial uh, uh, facilities and so on at the end of the year they these guys realized that one billion dollars were missing from uh, the, the 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 picture so they were uh, lending 100 million dollars uh, billion dollars uh, and they were they they got documentation for 99 so what happens is uh, it happens that uh, cost of interoperability as you can see manual re-entry cost which means I could not read the document I had to retype it completely because it was not compatible is five almost five hundred thousand uh, five hundred million dollars uh, and uh, this is before uh, start of the work and this is after so there are another 30, 000, 30 million dollars so the reality is that almost 500 million dollars uh, half a billion dollar is lost uh, because of lack of interoperability in a single industry in a single country in addition the, pr the issue is that the uh, the complexity of the XML allows to uh, people uh, to to the malware industry to use documents uh, Microsoft Office document as uh, uh, carriers of viruses and uh, and other uh, malware attacks this is the situation in 2011 as you can see you have a PPT docker and uh, XLS X uh, and uh, this is the situation in 2018 uh, according to Kaspersky lab 70 percent of all the attacks in the last quarter on 2018 were uh, carried by Microsoft Office files so there is not just a question of uh, interoperability but there is a question of security so uh, to summarize uh, you have a proprietary document format uh, and you don't have interoperability if you use a pseudo standard you have false interoperability you think you you have interoperability the reality is that the interoperability is based on the use of that software and you have a true standard document format so full interoperability based on on format and not on the software last uh, about LibreOffice uh, we released two versions as you probably know uh, we call it fresh and still uh, um, they are targeted to uh, new early adopters and uh, to production environments the the production environment version has also LTS options available for from uh, ecosystem companies so these are the LibreOffice versions you have a desktop from TDF an LTS from Collabora and CIB 
an online version from TDF, Collabora and CAB with different characteristics, an Android version from Collabora, an iOS and Apple Store from Collabora, and a Windows Store from CIB. LibreOffice 7.0 recently announced uh, as uh, ODF13 support, uh, as a SCIA graphic engine and GPU acceleration, and improved MS Office uh, compatibility. These are the main um, flagship uh, features, but then uh, you have a video that tells you which are the, the, the other features. Number of uh, users of LibreOffice, uh, uh, we calculate to have 100% um, of desktop Linux users, 10% of uh, desktop Windows and Mac OS users. At the end, uh, the total of this uh, is around 250 million users, but we uh, reduce this to 200 million to account for duplication. Of course, uh, not all the 200 million are exclusive users. Many of them, probably 50%, use LibreOffice and use another Office suite, either online or on the desktop. Our objectives to getting enterprises about getting professional support for LibreOffice. There's still the number of uh, enterprises paying for uh, the use of LibreOffice is uh, extremely small in comparison with all the people that is using them. Increase the certification program to allow community members to add value and make money with LibreOffice and help migration from MS Office to LibreOffice based on professional support, which is also based on the certification. And uh, that was all. Thank you for uh, uh, listening to me. I hope uh, this was interesting. If you have questions, these are my uh, email address. And uh, thank you. And uh, hopefully, goodbye and see you in Kosovo in 2021. All right. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Italo. Uh, those that have attended SFK conferences know that you are an old friend uh, of SFK and of Flask. Um, I don't know if the audience has any questions. You can write them down on the chat down here. Uh, but I had a few to start with. Uh, can you tell us more about the online efforts? How developed are those and uh, 
what's going on in that department. So the the online version of LibreOffice is uh, is developed and available. Um, the we we at the moment uh, uh, there are uh, basically two different uh, products. Uh, the one is a commercial product is called Collabora Online uh, and uh, it's uh, for enterprise deployments uh, where uh, uh, when you need uh, support and uh, then we have a, a docker uh, a release which is a docker container released by the document foundation uh, that is uh, uh, of course uh, the what is released by the document foundation has to be integrated with an online um, uh, storage or an online uh, cloud service like uh, Nextcloud uh, and uh, then you need to manage uh, uh, sign on uh, because uh, contributor people active on the documents have to be recognized and they have to have an unique um, ID uh, we are uh, discussing at the moment uh, on how to release uh, a version from the Document Foundation uh, because uh, uh, this is uh, important that we provide also an uh, open source version. Uh, but of course, uh, we cannot uh, put the, the, uh, the business of the companies that have uh, developed uh, the online version at a risk. So, uh, I think uh, there will be uh, a delay between uh, the release of uh, new features on the commercial version and on the uh, community version. Uh, we still have, have not decided uh, uh, which is going to be this delay, but uh, let's say that the uh, TDF version is already working uh, properly uh, we want to release something which is easier to deploy but of course uh, uh, being easier to deploy that would uh, allow even large enterprises that are at the moment paying for uh, the commercial version to use it for free as we have seen uh, unfortunately during the, our 10 years history the number of uh, enterprises uh, who um, are willing uh, to pay even a small uh, amount of money uh, to you for the use of LibreOffice is uh, really uh, negligible or close to zero. Uh, we get uh, uh, a lot more money from individual uh, donors, from uh, individual users that decide to donate to the project then for companies that are uh, using uh, LibreOffice even in some cases on hundreds or thousands of seats. Uh, we need to improve uh, uh, the education of these companies and uh, have this company uh, understand that Either they start uh, uh, contributing uh, in some way, which can be by hiring developers, can be by paying developers to solve bugs, uh, can be by hiring developers to solve new, uh, new features, can be by paying a version, a long-term supported version. Um, otherwise, the, the, the sustainability of the project may, be, uh, may have risks. Um, of course, this uh, doesn't mean that the project uh, we, is not stable, but the, the issue is uh, that uh, the, de the developers uh, uh, would uh, focus their attention on different uh, areas uh, or on different projects and the uh, pace of development of LibreOffice could uh, slow down. So it is important uh, that also in uh, in uh, local communities understand that using LibreOffice is a fantastic opportunity for enterprises uh, uh, but the enterprises should uh, contribute uh, in some way to the project because otherwise 
there is a, there is a real risk uh, of the project uh, becoming uh, uh, less competitive uh, in terms of uh, features uh, uh, in comparison with what is uh, available in uh, in the market all right uh, message uh, taken um, where do you see the project in the let's say in the next five years perhaps two, uh, ten years is uh, too long to plan in in tech but uh, what's going to happen and where do you need most help uh, perhaps as well um, let's say that uh, I think that in five years uh, uh, the uh, integration between the different version of LibreOffice will be stronger and now of course we have a, a desktop version which is uh, 30 years old in terms of code in some areas uh, uh, is at least 10 years old in terms of uh, uh, the, our uh, uh, source code uh, we have an online version which is uh, four years old probably um, and uh, uh, um, mobile version, uh, which is two and a half, two years, two and a half years old. So they, they are at different stages of development, uh, different uh, level of robustness. Uh, they will uh, be more aligned in the future. We plan uh, to have uh, better uh, marketing uh, of the project uh, we would like to start working uh, with universities to have uh, to educate more uh, students uh, to open source uh, to have uh, hopefully some of them uh, <coughs> decide to contribute to LibreOffice uh, in different areas we have we need uh, the project is huge so we we need people in in every area development of course Quality assurance is important. Uh, documentation is important. Uh, localization is very important. LibreOffice is uh, actually the software available in the highest number of languages, 119, uh, but we have more project, more um, language project uh, coming. And uh, we have applied to the Guinness World Record uh, to be recognized as the uh, software available in the highest uh, number of languages. Uh, so we wait for an answer from, uh, from them. Uh, and uh, of course, marketing is important as well. Uh, uh, we have an infrastructure uh, where we already have a number of volunteers taking care of it, but uh, uh, the infrastructure is big and uh, we need uh, contributors there as well uh, design um, we we know that for instance in uh, in albania uh, there is a uh, an open source design community and contributing to the design of LibreOffice uh, can be important so the contribution may be really everywhere the project is uh, is really extremely large um, it's uh, probably one order of magnitude uh, larger than usual uh, uh, open source project uh, because uh, we have a larger number of end users uh, and uh, while the majority of open source project have uh, technical users and not uh, common users like LibreOffice so the the opportunities are many uh, the uh, the the website what can i do uh, for libreoffice uh, has been developed in albania so by the albanian community uh, so maybe someone from kosovo has contributed as well uh, and uh, that's all unfortunately this year we will have only a virtual conference It's going to be in around a month uh, September October 15 16 17 uh, but we hope uh, to be able to to meet the people and the community again in 2021 probably in uh, in Germany as uh, Germany had to cancel uh, the the conference in 2020
Okay, and one last uh, question, since uh, the time is up. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, adoption in the region? There were some uh, developments in Albania, in Tirana. Uh, you had the LIPCON there, and we hope to uh, host it in Kosovo, hopefully, uh, soon. Uh, but any other uh, sparks of hope uh, that or major developments in the region that you have seen? Um, the one I don't I don't know uh, of any additional. I mean, uh, the city of Tirana has moved, uh, so there may there may be other cities in in Albania. Unfortunately. Um, most of the use the, the people that move to LibreOffice are uh, coming from the proprietary software uh, environment so they 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 do not consider the opportunity of um, uh, talking with the community uh, and uh, when uh, we we talk to with with some of them uh, they they confuse the document foundation and the community for a software vendor it is true that we are similar to a software vendor, but we are a community. So um, we, it's difficult uh, to, uh, to explain and to teach people that uh, working with open source uh, is different in uh, many, also in the case of um, interacting uh, with the, with the um, community that is developing the software. Uh, during the last year, only uh, CERN in Geneva uh, has approached us uh, in the right way as a community. Uh, but this is because uh, many people at CERN are uh, uh, open source contributors, so they already know the, the environment. In other cases, uh, it's really difficult. Uh, the, there is a huge uh, confusion between uh, a company and a community and people think that if you talk to some uh, people from the community then uh, you you get engaged and you have to pay money or uh, you uh, you know that what happens in uh, in in proprietary environment so it, this is something also where we should educate people that talking and working with the community is probably the first thing that you should start doing uh, when you think about moving to LibreOffice. Then, of course, there will be a point where you have to decide if you want to do a professional migration, you need to, um, to, to get consultants that can help you. But this is not the first, the first contact. It's probably at the second level when you already understand uh, uh, the software you already understand uh, the form the, the standard formats and you start uh, um, working with the community but this is not happening so in many cases we don't know where LibreOffice is used because the users if they are not um, uh, used to open source uh, they are scared about talking with us it's like uh, you know, they, they, they are scared like uh, they're talking to, to Microsoft or Oracle, uh, like uh, we had a license that can uh, block them and lock them in for, for years, which is exactly the opposite uh, that happens with, uh, with open source. And this, I, I think, is not only for, uh, for LibreOffice, but for most open source software. Okay, thank you very much, Italo. Uh, next up, we move to uh, Dren Imerai, who's a, a hardware developer, among other things, in Kosovo, from Kosovo. And his uh, session is called Designing an Open Source Acoustic Precipitation Sensor. Uh, 